Okay, welcome back to the next part of the video. Let me unpause. In the last video, we brought the XR2 from the moon over here to Earth, and we did everything uh, pretty well on the money. So we're arriving at Earth with a relative inclination from the ISS of only 0 0.01, and it's possible that, that will actually work itself out to be 0.00, .00 by the time we get down to uh, periapsis, which will be in about 5,000 seconds. So let's get ourselves ready to uh, do some atmospheric braking. Got my joystick here in front of me, and I'm going to actually lift this up for a moment and try to show it to the camera, because somebody always asks what joystick I'm using. And this is the Thrustmaster uh, T Flight Stick Hotas, something like that. I forget the exact name of it. But it's a two in one piece on the side over here. That's the throttle portion, and this side's the joystick portion. These actually separate. So if you would rather have, you know, if you'd, if you'd like to have. You know the throttle over here and the joystick way over here you know separated by two or three feet they, they do separate so you can actually have them that way and i do like this joystick i've the only thing i really have to compare it with is the cytec x52 pro i think that's the name of it and despite the fact that that joystick cost a fortune i think it sucks to be honest i hated it i, I bought it myself and i hated it and sent it back this one cost a fraction of what that one cost, and I think this one's way better. Okay. Rotation. We probably don't need the retro doors open, so it would be a good idea to close those while I'm thinking about it. Go ahead and warp time four, just go to 100. So we can keep an eye on how things are progressing. Bring up orbit MFD and an external. I'll set it here. Actually, let's put it here. So I'm at 10x, and I'm just warping time forward very slowly. I'm just thinking while I'm going here, so just bear with me. <clears throat> so according to TransX, we are going to be very close to the ISS. I don't know if it's in front of me or behind me, but it really doesn't matter. <clears throat> but we are also going to slow down when we hit the atmosphere, so this is going to be inaccurate. But we should be close enough that we won't have to orbit a ton of times <clears throat> in order to do the rendezvous. One of these days, maybe I'll even be able to set this up so that I can hit the atmosphere, slow down and then catch the ISS as soon as I, you know, climb back out. That would be really cool. That would be some pretty amazing flying. I think Fly Tandem actually did that once. I don't know if he's got a video of it or not, but I remember him talking to me about just that, uh, just doing that one time, but I, I don't know if he was saying that he did it or if he was saying that it can be done. Anyway, it'd be cool. <clears throat> All right, let's go to a hundred. We're only two thousand five hundred seconds out. Two thousand seconds. And I guess we're probably not going to have to worry about relative inclination anymore. When we get down into the atmosphere, we're going to want to fly as close to dead center as possible so that we don't have any effect on our plane. 
1,000 <clears throat> seconds out. We're at an altitude of 2,600 kilometers. Looks like we're actually going to be nighttime this time. I didn't think to uh, leave the moon. Yeah, we're going to be nighttime when we do the braking. That'll be okay. I think we were daytime last time. <clears throat> Translation. Go ahead and roll over. Heads down. Bring up surface MFD. And we're just going to point our vessel right at the positive velocity vector for the time being. Let me just think about things. I'm going to close the radiator here in a little bit. I don't know that we absolutely have to, as long as our dynamic pressure stays below 16, but I don't want to run the risk. So we'll just close it up when we get in a little closer. We're at 700 kilometers. Close the radiator. Put that over there. And we'll watch our temperature display as we get down into the atmosphere here in a moment. And we'll be coming around to the ascending node at about the same time, but it uh, doesn't much matter. But if we need to, we can add in maybe just a touch of uh, left there to bring that last 0.01 .01 out. But we really got to watch trying to do any correction because we're, our relative inclination is so low that if we do any banking at all, we're just going to throw it way off. <clears throat> but we'll be in the atmosphere for a while, so we've got plenty of time to do any steering. <clears throat> kind of be interesting to watch uh, Transex over here, the closest approach, to see exactly what happens <clears throat> as we slow down. Will this... Uh, get closer or farther out. I'm guessing it's going to get farther out. It would it would have to. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, go ahead and warp time forward. Get all the way down to 150 kilometers or so. APU on, turn off rotation, turn on surface controls. <clears throat> and we're at 10,680 meters per second. We're probably still going to continue to speed up just a little bit more.
get the camera just to do a nice external view now and then maybe I can look outside a couple times <clears throat> I'm going to bring up one more external MFD. Okay, that should be good. Now, here's how I like to fly this. Keep the nose of the vessel pointed straight at the velocity vector. And we're trying to eliminate all that vertical speed. But the key here, and you really got to watch the vertical speed, that's the trick. You can, see, you can watch it here, you can watch it here. And we need that to get down to exactly about zero meters per second. And then we got to hold it there. If we let it climb, then that means we're, <clears throat> we're climbing and we don't want to climb. We want to get down to periapsis, we want to get to the lowest point of our orbit, and then we want to stay there. That's the key to doing this atmospheric braking. And the reason I mentioned that, actually, I'll go ahead and say this. I was watching uh, Tenfoil Chef, a little shout out to him. If you haven't seen his channel, check it out. I think he mostly does Minecraft, but he's got some cool <clears throat> orbiter videos on there as well. Anyway, he was trying this, and I just noted, and I said to him in his video, you know, when you get down to this point, you can see my vertical speed is now reaching zero. And I want to just pull back in so that I keep it here at zero or close to zero. You know, I don't want to let it, I don't want to climb back out. That's the, the main thing here. It's, it's okay if it goes to a positive number for a moment. But if you let it, you know, go to a positive number like 10, 11, 12, and then just continue climbing, then you're, you're skipping back out into space, basically. And, and that's not atmospheric braking that's atmospheric skipping so you can see here we're at 67 kilometers getting pretty warm so it's okay if we climb back out a little bit get closer to 70 kilometers maybe so we don't heat up so much <clears throat> that's what we look like on the outside probably wouldn't be a real comfortable ride in terms of uh, how you felt about being inside this thing. Okay, you see our vertical speed is getting really high now, so I want to pull back in. You know, I'm at 44 meters a second, 40 meters a second, so I'm just, you know, if you let it climb and continue to climb, you'll skip out. So I'm pulling back in toward the earth, I'm pitching in toward the earth, and I imagine this has to be easier with a joystick. If you don't have a joystick, I would highly suggest getting, you know, some 4 or $5 stick. I wouldn't get a game pad, I would get a joystick. You know, anything has to be better than nothing. So now my vertical speed, you can see it's basically back down to zero. So now I can maybe relax on the stick a little bit. And so I don't have to put in so much back pressure. I can add in some up elevator trim, up elevator trim. It's like I can max it out actually. Well, I don't want to quite go max. And I'm kind of watching my relative inclination. I can see it's getting out a bit. So I'm trying to just make sure it doesn't go too far out. But that's how you do atmospheric braking. You just keep your vertical speed right there around zero point, uh, you know, or, or right around zero meters a second, plus or minus. It's okay, you know, if it if it gets up to 20 or 30 or negative 20 or 30, just as long as you don't let it get out of control. Once you get to a certain point, you end up climbing so fast that no matter how aggressively you try to pitch down into the earth, it won't do any good. You'll skip out. And vice versa. If your negative, if your vertical speed gets too far into the negative, then you'll be descending into the atmosphere so fast 
that no matter how much correction you put in the other way, it won't matter, you'll burn up. So it's really not all that difficult. You just get a feel for it. Watching my relative inclination. And take a quick look outside. Things have cooled down, it looks like. So my relative inclination is going around the other way, so I'm gonna put in a little bit of put in a little bit of left bank. And you can see that rate is now negative 0, 0.00, so it's not gonna climb. And I feel now like I'm at that point you know, where I have absolute control of the vessel. I have almost no pressure on the back stick at all, and it's kind of holding itself right here. In fact, if I put in maybe one more tick of up elevator, maybe two ticks of up elevator trim, then I won't have to have any pressure on the back stick at all. Relative inclination 0.00. It's kind of going around the other way, so I might need a little bit of right a little bit of right bank here to get the rate like that. Pitch into the atmosphere just a little bit. We're at 70 kilometers. We don't really want to go any higher. So we'll bring our vertical speed down. Okay, a little bit too much on the bank there, so I definitely want to Bank to the left, Tad. Go with that for now. And I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen over here with the regards to our encounter with the ISS. There's just too much changing too quickly at this point, I believe. But we are here. That's the green line. The ISS is behind us. So that's probably probably not ideal. It's, it should probably be in front of us because we're traveling faster than the ISS. But that's okay. It just means that when we establish our orbit, we're going to want to have an APA of maybe 500 kilometers. And that will, if we, so that'll put us above the ISS which means we'll orbit the Earth slower than the ISS is orbiting. And by orbiting slower than the ISS, it will catch up to us because it'll be orbiting faster. So now I'm putting in a little bit of, uh, I'm gonna actually adjust my elevator trim because now I'm having to put in so much pressure the other direction. It's definitely gonna be the last video of the night. My throat's really starting to get sore at this point. If we look outside, we can see, you know, we've got a little bit of a pressure wave there, but we're not, we're not glowing. Dynamic pressure is only 5.7. I believe we could even have the, the uh, radiator extended if we wanted to, but I'm not 100% certain if that would be a catastrophe, so I'm not going to try it. Just wait till we get slowed down. Apoapsis is all the way down to 48,000 kilometers and coming down quickly. So this is it. Just keeping myself here at 68 kilometers. Watching the vertical speed, making sure that it stays close to zero. Watching my temperature, make sure I don't heat up. If I heat up, I can just push then the stick forward a little bit to increase my vertical speed uh, you know bring it up above zero so that I'm climbing and that will get me out you know to 68 and a half kilometers or 69 kilometers in which case there will be less uh, atmosphere and we won't get as much heat and if we get dangerously high 
much up above 70 kilometers then we can pull in toward the earth a little bit to bring the vertical speed down to a negative number you know negative five meters a second in which case we'll descend farther in to the atmosphere so this is this is atmospheric braking done right as compared to the video that I uploaded and of course by the time this thing gets, gets uploaded I have absolutely no idea how long that other one will have been online sometimes it takes me months to get around to uploading these videos it's because I record a lot at once so that I can space my videos out over time like right now it's uh, February what is today February 10th I believe and I'm still uploading stuff that I recorded in early January. Okay, you can see my relative inclination is 0, 0.00, starting to swing around. So if it goes too far in the other direction, then I'll need to add in a little bit of bank. But we don't need to obsess over, over that. And in fact, you don't want to obsess over it, because if you do, you'll lose focus on your vertical speed and you'll end up skipping out or burning up and remember if your relative inclination is 0 0.5 or lower and we're 0 0.01 so we got a whole lot of error that we could still have on the relative inclination and still have no problem rendezvousing but if the relative inclination you know is as high as like 0 0.50 we could still rendezvous without any problem of course we would like to have it much lower than that but we just don't want to obsess over it. You don't want to focus all your attention on one aspect of the flight and then forget about the other aspects. As an example, my altitude is currently 67.3, so I need to climb out a bit. You know, because I'm talking too much, I'm focusing too much on talking, focusing too much on relative inclination, I'm not paying enough attention to my altitude. Now as a climb out, you don't want to let your vertical speed jump to a really high number like 120 or 150 because then you just have to you know pull back in the other way a lot. So when you're making adjustments to your altitude, maybe have your vertical speed up to no more than like 50 meters a second. I would probably say 25 to 30 is probably more what you'd want. Okay, I am going to take a look here at the relative inclination. It's now 0 0.02, so because we're in the atmosphere, there's no need to let it, and there's no need to put in that much correction either. I was going to say there's no need to let it climb, but definitely you don't want to put in too much correction because it's a small number. It won't take much at all to correct it. Okay, our apoapsis is down to 32,000. Still got a little ways to go here. And we are getting pretty far ahead of the ISS, so that's just something for me to make a mental note of if I do this flight again, then we definitely want the ISS, if we can plan it, we definitely want the ISS to be in front of us by, you know, a bit. Not as much as I had in the other flight, but we also don't want to be right up next to the ISS when we arrive at Earth because we'll be traveling so fast that it's just going to fall farther and farther behind. And that's expected. Okay, altitude's good. I suppose at this point I can throw out the air brake. Probably could have done that sooner. As I do that, I'm, I can feel the vessel pulling itself out into space. So I'm going to add in some more up elevator to offset that air brake being deployed.
probably need a little bit of center of gravity shift as well because no matter I've got the up elevator all the way out and I'm still I can still feel the vessel just wanting to pull itself out yeah so I'm gonna add in just a little bit of a little bit of center of gravity Yeah, right about there so now I've got no pressure on the back stick at all and the vessels kind of naturally pulling itself in <clears throat> into the earth a little bit so now I just push forward a little bit and that offsets the uh, vertical speed and do a bit of an adjustment with the up elevator because I just like to find that point where the vessel's basically holding itself almost perfectly at zero meters a second without me having to put in any put in any input on the stick. So by having it like that, then all I have to do to make any corrections is just a tap or a tap. You know, tap back or tap forward. Um, in real flight is much like that too. I've done quite a bit with uh, you know Microsoft Flight Simulator and whenever you're flying from point A to point B and you're doing it manually and you're not using all the autopilots you always want to find that point you know where you've got your elevator trim set just perfectly so that you can just relax on the stick and do <clears throat> very subtle adjustments okay we're going to put in a little bit of left bank here to bring that relative inclination closer to zero and I probably overdid the left bank again take away a little bit of center of gravity take away a little more it's still pulling itself in pretty pulling itself in more than I want yeah, you can see we're getting pretty far ahead of the ISS <clears throat> okay I can see the line of notes swinging around so I'm going to put in my put in a little bit of right bank just a tad to keep it from going up a little bit of left bank Apoapsis is 17,000, so we've got a little more to go. One more tap of up elevator. One more. Okay, line of nodes is almost back to the center, so put in a little bit of right bank early try to anticipate the swing okay, pull down into the atmosphere a little bit vertical speed is 20 meters a second positive so we're climbing and we don't necessarily want to climb Apoapsis 15,000. And we've got ourselves a pretty comfortable ride now, I would say. And a little bit more up elevator. We're feeling myself pulling back a lot a little bit more, a little bit more yeah, we're up to 69 uh, 69 kilometers so definitely put in some pressure the other direction to push ourselves down into the atmosphere a little bit looks like we might be coming around to sunrise
APU fuel 30%. Yep, we are. That's pretty cool. That timed out pretty well. Okay, just a touch of right bank. <clears throat> Apoapsis, 12,600. not really paying a lot of attention to surface at the moment so let me bring up map MFD target the ISS let me put in some pitch out a little bit bring that vertical speed closer to zero take away some of that elevator trim Track our position, zoom in a bit. So yeah, the ISS is behind us by quite a bit. So when we when we when we're done with all this atmospheric braking, we're going to want our apoapsis to be you know 500 kilometers, maybe even six or seven hundred. Um, actually, maybe even a thousand, because we're pretty far in front of the ISS. So the higher our Apoapsis is the faster the ISS will catch up to us. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Yeah, because it'll be traveling faster. So, yeah, we're going to want an Apoapsis. I'm going to say, you know, like a thousand. And then when we circularize, we'll be traveling quite a bit slower and it will catch up to us. Okay, looks like we need a little bit of left bank here. Not to overdo it. But our relative inclination is 0 And that says uh, XR2 Expert in the map, by the way. Uh, and the reason it says that is because I'm using a bunch of overrides for this vessel. And the name of the config file is Expert. And the reason I called it that is because in the config file, <clears throat> it says that in order to get up to uh, you know rendezvous with the ISS with your settings set to a certain point, that it requires, quote, expert level skill. So I, just, I definitely do not consider myself an expert by any stretch of the imagination. But I just, I just called it that just because that's what it says in the config file. In fact, on Orbiter Forum, where it asks you what your proficiency is, I put beginner. Because despite the fact that I've been playing with Orbiter for coming up on three years, in a lot of ways I still feel like a beginner. I did have it set for inter intermediate at one point, but after thinking about it a little bit more, I'm like, no, nah, I'm a beginner. Okay, Apoapsis is 8,000. Relative inclination is 0 0.01. Vertical speed, whoa, am I letting myself get kind of low there? Let's definitely pitch out a bit. Go ahead and zero my, is it Alt-M? Yeah, Alt-M zeroes out your center of gravity. So I'm going to climb. Climb out to at least 68 kilometers. And that's what I was talking about with the, you know, focus. You know, you get thinking about other things, let your mind drift, and then you look down and you're burning up. Of course, we're not bringing up in this case, but, you know, without having noticed <clears throat> that my, 
altitude had dropped, I, you know, could have gotten into a dangerous situation there in just another few seconds. It doesn't take long. Putting in just a little bit of left bank. Get that relative inclination. Apoapsis 6000, so it won't be long before we will start climbing back out. Mm, yeah. So we definitely want to start monitoring the relative inclination because once we climb out, we won't have any control over the relative inclination. <coughs> Okay, we're at 68 and a half kilometers, so now I'm going to try to keep myself at zero meters per second uh, vertical speed. <clears throat> Apoapsis 5500. I need to start drinking uh, carbonated water, uh, sparkling water. One of the reasons I like soda is for the fizz, that fizzy sensation that I get. It actually feels like it soothes my throat a little bit. <clears throat> but of course all that sugar is terrible for you. But these cups that you always see me drinking out of, this is just regular water. That's a problem. That could be a problem. I wasn't even paying attention to that. Oh my gosh. Um, yikes. I completely forgot about the fact that I'm burning through APU at a tremendous rate. Wow. Uh, that could be a big problem. Just center of gravity or anything now. But I feel like I need to save the remaining APU. Well, at least we got the orbit mostly taken care of. We'll be okay. I can do the rest of this with these just gentle RCS maneuvers. But I just completely forgot that in this configuration I would be burning through APU much, much faster. 
we definitely need to save some of it to open the nose cone and open the radiator. In fact, I can probably open the radiator here shortly. Coming around to the node, descending node, and then I'll bank back the other way, and then we'll climb out. Because I'm at 3,700 on the APA. Yeah, things just got interesting. Uh, I need um, more like curtains and things in here because I know this. I know I get some echo in here. I can hear it in the headset when I speak. Sometimes I get these whistles or other reflections off the wall. I do have a pop filter for this mic, but I can't use it because of the way it's set up. It's currently sitting on my desk, and I just don't have any way to mount the pop filter. Okay, apoapsis at 3,000 kilometers. We're almost around to the descending node. I think that timing will work out. So as I get around to the descending node, I'll bank back to the right a little bit to fix that last little bit of relative inclination, and then we'll immediately climb out after that. That'll probably put our apoapsis somewhere near a thousand kilometers, and that's what I want. Then we'll circularize and be ready to rendezvous. Uh, I was gonna turn the APU back on just to zero out the Elevator trim, but I'm not going to bother. I don't want to waste it. Okay, almost at the node. So now I'll put in just a little bit of right bank. A little bit more. A little bit more. There we go. Okay, don't overdo it. Relative inclination is 0, 0.0. 0. So now we go back to the center position. And now we're going to climb out. And it's a little early to climb out, but we're going to climb out anyway. As we climb out, we just need to keep control of the relative inclination. Can't close the air brake. APA 2000. Just climbing out, keeping the relative inclination at zero. Once we get up here a little bit higher, we'll 
be fine. I probably should have turned over for this, but it's okay. APA 2000. Okay, we're at about 80 kilometers almost. So dynamic pressure is getting very low, which means we're not getting hardly any atmospheric, you know, control one way or the other. That's fine because our relative inclination is 0, 0.00, so we got all the correction that we needed. Okay, let's go ahead and turn over. Switch over to orbit HUD. You can see our rate is negative 0, 0.00, relative inclination is 0, 0.01. And now it's 0, 0.00. Let's go back to the center position. Try to hold it right there. Altitude 95 kilometers, dynamic pressure zero. Let's open the radiator. Close the air brake too. Okay, well that went pretty well except for the fact that I ran the APU dangerously low. I'm gonna open the nose cone. Wow, look at that coming down, that's fast. Turn off the APU. We should have all of our things extended that need to be extended so we don't need any more hydro hydraulic pressure that I know of. Okay, let's take stock of what we're doing. Let's assess our situation. Put the controller away. don't need it anymore. Okay, we're in front of the ISS by quite a bit. So the best thing for us to do is to come around to Apoapsis and go ahead and circularize all the way. Even though that has our Apoapsis all the way up to 2000. I don't know if we necessarily need to circularize, but we need to bring up Periapsis, I would say, to at least you know 300 or so. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll probably just go ahead and end this part. Yeah, in fact, you can see the ISS is now catching up to us pretty quickly, so probably don't need to circularize all the way. Let's go ahead and use prograde. It's wasteful, but let's use it anyway. Fuel isn't a concern in this mission. It will be to Apoapsis in 25 seconds. What I'm going to do is just bring up my PEA to, you know, like 300 kilometers or something. And let's make it like 400, the altitude of the ISS. And we'll go with that. Okay, turn per grade off. Now, 
our orbital period is 6,535 seconds. The ISS is 5,500 seconds. So it, it orbits 1,000 seconds faster than we do. So it's going to catch up rather quickly. In fact, we'll probably be able to rendezvous as quickly as just down here on the other side. In fact, it may even pass us before we get over that point, in which case we'll have to come around to PEA and then lower our APA quite a bit. But we'll deal, all, we'll deal with all that in the next video. This one was just the atmospheric braking video. So I'm going to go ahead and control S to save here. Let's see which MFDs I have up. It doesn't really matter. I don't need, I don't need to worry about having a Transex plan saved or anything. So I can close these out. And that's going to be it for tonight. I recorded like four videos in a row, but I can't do any more. My throat hurts too much. So I don't know when I'll get around to recording the next part. Uh, if you have any questions, leave those questions down below. If you liked the video, you know I like my comments. So please leave a comment. And then I will see you in the next part.